Hello and welcome to this Dexco video tutorial. Today we'll be installing an Aqua Computer water block on a single PCB GTX 295 graphics card. In this video I'll be using a point of view GeForce GTX 295 single PCB graphics card and an Aqua Computer Aqua Graphics for GTX 295 single PCB water block. Before we get started, a few cautionary notes. Test your graphics card with the original air cooler before switching to the water block. When handling hardware, always make sure you are statically discharged. And remember that removing the original heatsink voids the warranty of your graphics card. Proceed at your own risk. Alright, the first thing we need to do is to remove the GTX 295's plastic cover. This cover is fastened to the heatsink with four plastic clips on either side. Insert a screwdriver into each of the openings below the clips and gently pry the cover off. Hidden away in one of the corners close to the PCI bracket, you'll find the first screw that needs to be removed. In the center, next to the fan, you'll find the fan connector that can now be unplugged. Once this is done, you can turn the card around. Here, there are a total of 17 screws, marked in green in this image, that need to be removed. You can simply unscrew all of them with a screwdriver and then lift off the two back plates. The thermal pads attached to the back plates don't need to be removed since we'll be reusing them once we install the water block. The two last screws that need to be removed are located on the front of the PCI bracket. Now the graphics card can be separated from its heatsink. Grasp both the PCB and the heatsink firmly in your hands, apply gentle, even pressure and move both parts back and forth in a twisting motion. Because the two parts are stuck together with thermal paste, it may require some patience to get them to separate. Soon enough, the heatsink will come off and then we'll be ready for the next step. It's time to clean the graphics card off. First, remove all of the leftover bits of thermal pad. Then wipe the thermal grease off the graphics chips. There's usually also some residue on the MOSFETs and memory chips that should be wiped off. I recommend using Arctic Clean or some similar cleaning agent since this makes removing thermal paste a lot easier. Now we can apply new thermal pads. A piece of thermal padding needs to be placed on each of the surfaces marked in blue in this image. You can roughly estimate what size each piece of padding needs to be and cut it out with a pair of scissors. Then remove the protective sheet from both sides of the pad and apply it to the graphics card. This same process is repeated seven times. This is what the card looks like once all of the thermal padding is applied. Make sure not to miss the two small pieces in the top corners. Next we can apply fresh thermal paste. All of the surfaces that we need to use thermal paste on have been marked green in this image. Apply a spot of paste on each of the surfaces and use a finger wrapped in plastic foil or a small plastic spatula to spread it out evenly. As you can see, I'm applying the paste quite generously. Experience has shown that very thin layers of thermal paste are often not sufficient for good contact all across a full cover block. When applying thermal paste to a single component like a CPU, it's a different story, of course. Here's what the GTX 295 looks like with all of the thermal materials in place. Now you may notice that I'll be wearing these gloves as soon as the water block gets involved. I'm not doing this as a tribute to a recently deceased pop idol, but rather because copper blemishes very quickly when handled with your bare hands. I recommend always wearing gloves when handling bare copper, otherwise you'll have to put in a lot of time to polish your blocks clean again. Now I use a small box for elevation and place the water block on top of it with the back facing upwards. Next I place the graphics card onto the water block making sure that the screw holes in the PCB are perfectly aligned with all of the threads in the water block.
Now both back plates can be put down onto the back of the PCB again. Use the screws supplied with the water block to attach block, graphics card and back plates to each other. It's best to begin with the screws arranged around one of the GPUs and work outward from there. Don't tighten the screws all the way down when first attaching them. Instead, once the screws are in place, go around a second time to gently tighten the screws some more. Most importantly, make sure that you never apply so much pressure to any screw that the PCB starts bending. This completes the installation of the water block. Supplied with the block, you will find two stop fittings. These are used to shut off the unused threads. Attach a fitting to any of the four threads available and use one of the stop fittings on the thread opposite to your barb or compression fitting. Once the fittings and stop fittings are in place, the GTX 295 is ready to be integrated into a water cooling loop. Enjoy!